Thanks for waiting, everybody. Uh, welcome to the large assembly performance for SolidWorks. Our presenter today is from Hawk Ridge Systems. His name is Vince Farrell. And without further ado, I'll take it away. Hey, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for attending. So today, I'm going to talk about a subject that is first and foremost on a lot of SolidWorks user lines, uh, minds, excuse me, that's large assembly performance. So I'm going to address that in four different way or four different sections here. So first off, talk about best practices, uh, then assembly tools, things you can use to investigate your assembly, see what's going wrong and, and what you can do with it different assembly modes and understanding them and how to use them to your advantage. And then just general modeling techniques along with um, some system options, document properties that could potentially help you uh, speed up that performance. So first off, let's go into best practices. <clears throat> And the first thing we say is, well, what is large, right? And, um, you know, Lars or other users talk about maybe a 200 part um, assembly. That's not definition large, but if it's slowing down your system resources and it's uh, taking a long time to rotate, open, open apart, um, that's a large assembly, right? I mean, it's just uh, slowing things down, right? It's hurting your productivity. So, uh, these are the various symptoms, right? Slow performance when opening or saving, performing rebuild, rotating and zooming, um, inserting components, moving components, adding mates, and making drawings, right? And um, I'm sure if I saw, asked for a show of hands, I, everyone would raise their hand about seeing something like this, right, with their assemblies. So um, that's the goal of this presentation, to give you some insight on this. 30% is under SOLIDWORKS control, but 70% is under your control, the user, different things that you can do um, within your design, again, in the back end with system options and document properties and best practices. And that's what, that's what we're going to go over today in this presentation. So the first thing um, we recommend is to minimize the number of top level mates. Okay. Now the reason you want to do that is every time you do a rebuild um, or you open an assembly, SolidWorks is looking to solve those mates. So the more you have at that top level, um, the more it's going to bog down system, bog, bog down your performances. So the, uh, how do you do that? Well, the first thing is to use subassemblies. Um, the reason you use subassemblies and as many subassemblies as you can, uh, the reason you do that is when you bring those subassemblies into that top level assembly, it's like it's dipped in glue. It can't move um, unless you toggle something on, which we'll go into in the next slide. Um, but it's pretty much what we call a rigid assembly, which means that SOLIDWORKS doesn't solve those mates. Whatever it's saved as, it comes into the top level assemblies. So that's going to cut down things. Um, other things are to look at um, pro things like profile center mate, and I'll talk about um, different the different mates in the um, later on. Uh, and so I have two people in the room. Have either of you used profile center mate or heard of it? No. So that's what this is right here. This arm, this video that's going here. So basically. Um, rewind here. So if you have two profiles like this, and, and you can look at the help file, but there's certain types of profiles, something like this that you want to center it in there, instead of doing the traditional maybe two width mates and a coincident mate between the two faces, use the profile center mate, and it will um, mate those up. It's this mate over here on your quick mate toolbar, um, or it's advanced mate, and it basically does all of that within one go. And you can also um, adjust the gap clearance here. So if you need to leave like a well gap or a gasket gap in there, that's what this little box is here um, to, to do that. And you can also flip around the orientation. And the other cool thing about those is if the, either of those two profiles change, it still SOLIDWORKS will um, preserve all the face IDs and everything. So um, 
Another thing is to use a lock rotation option in concentric mates. So when you bring in a concentric mate, for example, like this screw over here into these holes, um, you lock it down so it can't rotate anymore. Um, it doesn't add a mate and it basically keeps it so that SOLIDWORKS doesn't have to um, solve that extra degree of freedom of that rotation. So along those lines of um, what I was talking about, about rigid or flexible, so um, you want to avoid using flexible subassemblies if at all possible. And what that is is uh, mates must be, uh, again, you bring in a subassembly inside of a top level assembly, and I actually have an assembly open here. Um, so something like uh, this assembly here, this, this arm, um, when it comes in, it's what's known as, or it's that rigid assembly, so it can't move. But if I change it here to the make subassembly flexible, now all the mates that are in that subassembly are solved in the top level. You can obviously do that. It's a great tool to look at overall movement. Um, but once you're done making your changes, moving things around as much as you need, um, just toggle it back to that rigid mode, right? So you can continue on because as I said, it's going to be a huge performance hit. Okay. Now, a good way to test, you might be thinking, well, how do I know if my mates are affecting things? Take that top level assembly and just put it inside another assembly because of that behavior of it being rigid. If that thing opens like that, you know that it's something with those mates you got to minimize the mates. Now, um, this is kind of off the record, but obviously this is being recorded. So um, it's on the record. But what I've seen as a good rule is about 15 to 20 top level sub assemblies, right? And then breaking it down. Now, obviously, that's your file structure, how Google does it and things like that. But generally, if you stick within 15 to 20 items in your feature tree, you're pretty safe. So if that's possible. Um, also, you want to fully define the position of each part in the assembly, and that goes back to locking down those concentric mates so things can't move. Um, because, again, you, you, if, you, if something's locked, even if you just fix it, right, and it can't move, then SOLIDWORKS doesn't have to, when it goes through rebuild, it doesn't have to go back and look at the position of it again. It's just, it's there in space. Um, resolve errors as soon as they occur. Now, to be honest, in the larger company like this, that's not always easy, right? Because you're not always the one who controls the top level. But whenever you see the, those uh, errors pop up, you want to take a look at what's going on. And there's different ways. There's a tool called um, Mate Expert that you can go through. Um, you just right click on the Mate folder. I don't think it'll show up um, unless I have something that's, that's messed up. But if you right click on here, uh, there's a mate expert or uh, down here where it gives you the those errors and it'll it'll suggest different things. Um, but another thing is, right, if you add in a mate and then everything turns yellow, right, something to do with that mate. So you can go through and um, suppress different mates and see if it goes away or uh, there's different techniques there, but you really want to resolve those as they happen. Now, this is um, something I, I used to teach in my classes about dragging components into an approximate location and orientation before adding mates. Um, and that's something that kind of went away within SOLIDWORKS 2017. So they made it when you click on the two surfaces that you're going to mate, it actually can flip them around. It works a lot better um, than it used to. And Lars knows as well as I do, right? Um, but in general, when you're bringing things in, get them as close as they can. I always say, if you don't, SOLIDWORKS has to guess. Sometimes a guess is right, sometimes a guess is wrong. So that can help too, because you could end up having some funky mates or having to create extra mates that you don't need. So, mate performance. This is an interesting chart. So the fastest mates that are going to take to solve are the basic ones, right? Coincident, parallel, concentric. With, this is always a little surprising down here, right? A distance mate or an angle mate. Those actually take the longest and something to do with the 
calculations. I'm not a SOLIDWORKS programmer, so I can't give you the specifics, but that is what they've given us. Um, logical mates here, things like a width, a cam, a gear, all those mates, they're fancy, they're nice, but they do take a little bit um, longer to solve. Now I'm not saying if, if that's the kind of mate that you need, use it, right? I'm not discouraging you to use them, um, but you, a good knowledge will help you make an informed decision. Right. And then there's also these limit mates, which are again, great for motion because uh, you can say only move this, this amount, or it goes between here and there. That's great. But again, SOLIDWORKS takes a lot of time to solve that. So now um, this is something I have bookmarked in my help. Um, and I encourage you all to do that as well. Um, it's under the assemblies, mates, be best practices for mates. Uh, one of the examples here is uh, you have some kind of scheme here where you're mating all these parts to this bar. You want to mate them all to that base bar instead of mating that first one and then these and these and these because uh, they take large, long chains of components take longer to solve and are more prone to mate errors. Um, so I'm going to pull up the help even though you all are probably using web help um, and I don't because I don't always have um, not available, but uh, let's see here. So favorites should be there. And it's not. Why you got to make me a liar? <laughs> I think because I upgraded to 20, uh, 2019 and it doesn't always preserve that. So let's see. You just do a search here. Frequently. Best practices for me. There you go. So see? That image didn't come out of thin air. It's right there, right? So use the help too. This is not a problem that SOLIDWORKS hasn't seen in the past. And I'm going to talk about this um, a little bit later on when we talk about some of the modes. But uh, something I mentioned to Lars earlier is that 2019 made a lot of great improvements for weights. So, and there's a huge one uh, just for large assemblies, right? So SOLIDWORKS knows that this is something, it's, it's a pain. So I do a lot of these presentations, I'll tell you that, just full disclosure, so. All right. Any questions so far? I mean, I know I've only got you two in here and online, but feel free if you have a question about something, um, feel free to chime in at any time. Errors, talked about this earlier, right? I mean, this is very intimidating, something like this big tree or red, uh, but systematically just go it, go through it. I mean, obviously when you want to add in a mate and it turns everything else yellow or red, it's something to do with that mate. Now that doesn't mean you just delete that mate and forget about it, right? Take a little bit of time, investigate. As I said, you can go through and suppress the other mates and see what it does. Um, but the main thing here is fix those. Because if you do this again, um, there's a flow chart that uh, unfortunately I don't have, but one of my colleagues said that um, it'll have to go through and solve things multiple times if there's an error. Like it does it more than once, right? And that's what you want to avoid. That's what's going to take a while. Um, equation errors is a big thing. Um, this was something funny that SOLIDWORKS dropped on us uh, without telling anybody. Uh, and sometimes I run into it when I open up um, assemblies, this automatic solve order. I don't know, they just added that and then it broke things like because it's it's not referencing you're in the right question. So sometimes SOLIDWORKS does some interesting things like that, but it's just being aware of that. So is it best to have that checked or on? Yeah, checked. Check Automatic, okay. yeah. Unless there's some reason why you like want it to solve in a certain order, but generally it's it's automatic. And it the funny thing is it's this fan part that you use for all these different demonstrations. So every time before you start the demonstration, you have to go in there and make sure you click it for that part. <laughs> it's funny. So. And is that new for 2019? Or? No, I think they changed that in 17. Okay. So it might already, you know, if you're not seeing it, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's just something I point out just okay. in case. The problem was earlier you could get nested. Yep. Equations where it was solved on, but it wasn't solved for yet. And so you had to rebuild it twice to get your equations to work fine. And this one does a better job, supposedly, but right. it can also lead to trouble. Yeah. Just something to be aware of. Sure. 
Complexity. This is a big one. I mean, um, again, we're talking, Lars and I were talking and, you know, fasteners, right? And I, I'm guilty as charged. I did in my early days of SolidWorks, I used to model threads on screws. Well, probably one of the worst things you can do because it doesn't add any value and it actually hurts you. Um, and we will talk about can I just say one thing? Because we do a lot of McMaster parts sure. here, and, and they come in, and, like and they come in with threads. So, right. to anybody listening, suppress your threads when you bring anything exactly. from the McMaster because they have the features there. You can turn them off. Yep, and that that'll kill a section view or a wireframe fast. In in fact, right, I last time we were here and um, you guys were upgrading to 2018, I was with one of one of the users and. I was like, no, nah, get rid of that, get rid of that, right? Yeah. Um, you don't need it. The other thing, like I said, we'll talk about the different models and, and triangles, but um, pretty much every CAD program uses what they call these triangles to uh, approximate the shapes, right? The more triangles you have, the more performance hits, everything like that. So um, you have in this one with no threads, you got one fifth or almost one sixth the number of triangles that you do with this one. And again, this does not add any value besides looking pretty, right? Yeah, I've been going through it viciously, fixing our fasteners to not have threads. Yep, and it's good old McMaster. They, they love putting that in there, right? And I understand. All the other, other screw vendors. Yep. And your screw vendors. The other thing, and we'll talk about this a little later on, but I just heard this about McMaster Car 2 is like a lot of the models are the highest image quality just so they look really nice. So we'll talk about that, you know, turning that down. Um, so do not model threads. Avoid using text for features, okay? You don't need to do that or just avoid it. Uh, minimize unnecessarily detailed features. Suppress internal components. And we'll talk about this, about having different configurations. So having you know, you could even, you could have these, you're so attached to these threads, you want them, you can have them, but you want a simplified configuration that people can use for the upper, upper assemblies. Performance evaluation, formerly feature statistics. We'll talk about this a little bit later on, um, but inside a part, it's where you can see how long things are taking to rebuild and what features are taking the most amount of time, right? So you get the number of features, the solids, total rebuild time in seconds. So you can see here, this part's uh, pretty detailed, right? All these, what did I say? No text, no text. So you go to a simplified configuration, uh, just to point this out, rebuild time, three seconds on this part, down to 0.44 seconds for this part, right? And again, what did that hex add in that upper level assembly? And you can turn that on or off. Where's that at? Inside of a assembly, it's right here under the evaluate tab. Okay, we'll talk about that. And then the same thing if I open up uh, one of these parts. Thanks. Um, same thing, it's over here in the Evaluate tab, it's right there. It used to be called two separate things, like part expert and assembly expert, right, Lars? I mean, they changed it, so it's it's one. Uh, the cool thing, too, is you can also suppress features from here, too, so something you don't need. Really helpful um, in making those simplified configurations. Base count, right? I mean, we kind of already talked about that with the triangles, but small features equals small faces, high CPU, and graphics cost. So, I mean, this looks phenomenal, don't get me wrong, right? But rotating this is probably very painful, like having a tooth drilled. Uh, complexity, complexity inside the assembly. Avoid using the following in context references assembly patterns and assembly features. Are you guys doing anything like that in context references inside of assembly? We try to strip those out before we release anything, but right. we do a lot of patterns and 
uh, a lot of patterns, not a lot of features. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's something typical I hear. Yeah. In context references are great, especially if you're in that R and D mode, right? You need to get something done and cook it, but yes, definitely when it goes to production, get rid of them. assembly patterns is a surprising one. Cause again, it has to solve that multiple times. Um, I had a real case of that with a, um, solar panel company, one of my customers, and you know, they had a huge solar panel farm. And it was just patterns. It was like 15, 20 components, like we said, but it was all these patterns and it was so painful. And we said, you can use patterns again for the initial, but you want to dissolve them if it's bogging it down and do the whole subassembly thing. So it takes a little bit of, um, of massaging, but assembly patterns are something that can definitely slow down an assembly. That's good to know. We, we definitely have some assembly patterns. Mm -hmm. um, we, we really try to avoid using in, in context sure. references and assembly features. But, yeah. um, for like, you know, putting 20 bolts into an assembly if they're all in a circle or yeah, something. We, something we you can do too is, um, have you heard of like a component pattern? So if that if you're if whatever you're putting the bolts in if that's a pattern like that's a circular pattern you can just do a component pattern in the assembly and it's it's less calculation it's less calculation than yeah. just doing an assembly instead pattern. of doing an assembly pattern yeah and it will follow the same pattern that was already the bolt pattern in the part okay i'm not that's sure what the difference between those two features is. well it's good so i'll show you yeah so here we go back here. So here's under my assembly features. So um, these are what's called assembly features. Let's talk about this real quick. So these are things at the top level of the assembly and they behave different ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Again, never, try to do never those. Touch that. Yeah, try to do those in the parts, but um, under patterns, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's just these regular patterns like linear component pattern or circular pattern, but there's this one, sorry, I misspoke. It's pattern driven component pattern. So this one will look at the pattern on the part. So if that, like we were mm. talking about that whole okay. circle, if that's a circular pattern inside the part, you can do a component pattern on using that pattern. It'll pick it up and then it's sure. again, less calculations and, and such. So, um, that's that's just a little tip there. But a lot of these things too, I mean, obviously you're here for a reason, for, but if it's not a problem, you know, just keep kind of keep doing what you're doing. But um, yeah, so circular references, this is an interesting thing that if you're not really using assembly patterns, I mean, assembly features, it's not gonna affect you. But in this case, um, this is, you have some, some parts in here, and then you have a counter bore that's a um, assembly feature. And so what it's going through is it's actually, again, going back and solving it um, two or three times. So you have the mates, then it goes down to here, then it has to solve that again, and it kind of goes back up and it, it creates what a circular reference or circular reference. Now, the thing is, is about um, the performance evaluation tools that points those out to you so you can try to avoid those, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in, that, in that instance, would you rather copy with mates as opposed to use the derived pattern? Um, oh, the derived whole pattern? Yeah, either use, first of all, don't use an assembly pattern if you don't have to, right? I mean, assembly feature. Um, yeah, you could do a copy with mates. You could do um, what we talked about, that component pattern driven. If, if the whole pattern in the part is a pattern, just use that, leverage that. Because then it's just going to look to that original pattern and it's not going to do a whole new pattern that needs to be kept for you. Document properties. This is what I was talking about with those McMaster card, uh, card parts. That's this image quality. So what this is, is inside of a part, let me just show you on that other part. So your document properties are here, the gear, right? You click on it. If you have something open and active, you have the system options, which are for all of SOLIDWORKS, right? And these are probably locked down, right, Lars? Admin image or 
No. No, they're not locked down. Okay, no, cool. You can do whatever yeah. options you want. Good. I love that. It's your world. We're just living in it. Okay, so system options are the overall options for your SOLIDWORKS, right? No matter part, drawing, assembly, whatever you have open. Document properties are for whatever's open and active right now, so this part. Um, and then if you go to image quality, so you get this, this little uh, diagram here. So you have the slider bar. So if you move this up, you see the circle looks more like a circle, right? Because again, it's using triangles. Now all that's great and um, it can be nice, especially if you have a presentation or you're doing some kind of rendering, right? But otherwise you generally wanna keep it down to about three ticks from the left. Um, so it won't look as nice, but your performance will be a lot better. The other thing is increasing that image quality increases the file size, okay? So definitely something um, to look at when you uh, when you're opening a new part or you're getting a part from your vendor because of course for McMaster Car and I'm not bad mouthing McMaster Car I love McMaster Car but they do those kind of things right they want their part to look the best when you pull it up in the solid right so it's kind of on you to do that um, now I've gotten this question before about how do you apply it from an assembly down you can do that right here, this apply to all reference part documents. Um, just keep in mind, right, this is something that gets saved with the part or the assembly. So PDM users, you have to have it checked out for it to save it with it. Right? But it saves it into, when you check that for the reference parts, it goes into those files, dumbs them down and saves them? No, you have to check It's only at that assembly out. level. Yeah, okay. well, it won't apply, it'll apply it Right, but it won't save that to because those doc those image colors are part on a, of on the per part. part level. Yeah, so if you have a whole so assembly, you can, you can do it. Single part, right? That assembly. Exactly. Rather than going through opening this part, doing it, opening that's what that's meant to right. do. But you need ownership of everything. Yes, you got it okay. because it's saved with it, and hopefully, uh, whoever makes your document templates set that back to, to that level. Yes. Back to that, uh, maybe if your recommendation for image quality, for default image quality is for third tech from the left, mm -hmm. let's say we want to do a high resolution rendering. Okay. For whatever purpose. Mm -hmm. Do we have to then drag that over or in the rendering can we say increase your resolution? What, um, what are you using to do rendering? Are you using Visualize or are you using like Photo View 360? Yeah, Photo View. Um, Lars might know that a little better than I do. You I've need to set it. You need to set it at the assembly. You need to put, push everything up, or else it's going to get tessellated when you're under it. Right, right, yeah. You got to crank that and then and then do it. But just make sure you set it back when you're done. Got it. You did a nice talk on photo view, right? Right, Lars. Yes, we've covered rendering. shameless plug for other videos <laughs> on the Google system. All right. Uh, this is just to further illustrate the point, right? Low image quality, yeah, it doesn't look so gr as as great, but you're talking four mega megabytes and forty six thousand triangles. High image quality, a hundred and four megabytes, eighteen million triangles. Is this really worth it, right? That's that's something you you can ask yourself. And again, that's something that we'll talk about with the performance evaluation. It'll talk, it'll show you image quality so you can see you're not hunting around and opening every part and seeing what it is. Um, something that hopefully isn't a huge deal for you, uh, but every year SOLIDWORKS makes improvements to its files. Um, 2019, I would send uh, over some information or Lars about that. Um, but 2019 made a lot of huge performance too, but um, every version, uh, older version file, files are gonna be slower until they're updated. So for example, fully resolved in 2016 was two minutes, fully resolved in 2017, 33 seconds. Okay, it's gonna um, increase your performance and it's, again, it's gonna cut down on um, file size if that's, a, if that's a concern. Uh, yeah, 2015 is kind of old. Again, just to illustrate, uh, so 2015 re dramatically reduced file size. Solar add-ins. 
turn these off if you don't need them. Okay. Um, especially you guys are, I think, mostly on network licenses. So if you pull pull something, one of these add-ins that requires a higher level license, like a SolidWorks Premium, but you don't need it, someone else who might actually need it might be mad at you. So um, just keep that uh, that uh, in mind, and I'll show you where that's at here. Um, so if you go to this pull down here and go to add-ins. This is all your add-ins. So you see, I have basically nothing on, right? So if it's on, it'll be checked in this left column here. What this column does is at startup, every time it'll open that, that add-in. So unless you're doing something like you're the simulation person, you always need that add-in. So you wanna click on startup, you probably don't ever wanna do this. And um, also, you know, here you can see all of these uh, these times, that's how long it'll take to open up SOLIDWORKS with these on. So for mine, it's not bad, but uh, just something to keep in mind. If you uncheck something that has required a higher license, uh -huh. does it automatically relinquish that version, that it, that higher license? Um, I believe it does because when you pull it from the SNL, it pulls the SOLIDWORKS network license, it pulls a standard license and that license. So you technically have two licenses. So yeah, when you relinquish that add-in, it should return that license to the yeah, that's good. license. Great question. Love it. Wow. That was only the first section. And some of the sections are longer than others. so. Don't worry, we'll have plenty of time here. So let, next, let's go into assembly tools. So as I mentioned already several times, performance evaluation, um, formerly assembly expert. Now, um, this is a little bit, uh, sorry, a little bit out of date here. This is 2017 and previous. So what I'm going to do is, hopefully it's quick, go here. Um, by the way, this I use this large assembly because this has, I don't know, 7,500 parts and you can see how it's performing. It's performing pretty well, right? So uh, just as an example, the proof's in the pudding. So performance evaluation right here. So this is what you guys will see, I mean, provided you're all on 2018. Come on. I was just talking about how quick it's going. And it's, <laughs> should, should pull up. Come on. Oh man, solid shoot. That's weird. There we go. That's what's supposed to happen. So you see, they made it a lot more visually appealing. Um, details of open time, right? Graphs, so you can see which parts are taking longer to open. And again, that's going to have to do with how many features are in there, how many graphics triangles, things like that. Right, so you can go in there. Previous version references, that's what I was talking about, how many of these files need to be converted. Generally, um, again, for larger companies, you probably like a find and fix. So when you open something, when you take ownership of it, then when you save it, it automatically converts it up um, rather than going through and running like a PDM convert tool, which is um, <laughs> good or bad. I forget I'm being recorded. So, uh, <laughs> sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't, to just be honest. Um, graph, yes. Definitely have a faster in there with threads. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. So there's that graphics triangles, right? Shows you there. You can show these files, you can do a report. There's that image quality I was talking about, so medium high image quality, right? A very seven parts with very high image quality. Um, Let's see, verification on rebuild, yeah. Okay. Um, this is interesting, total number of components in here. So um, this is the uh, part components. And then there's something called unique part files versus unique part configuration. So um, I always have to go to the help to remember exactly what that is, but it's uh, if you have multiple components of something, it's, it's a little bit different, a different calculation. Um, and then, but something also interesting down here is at the bottom, this depth. What that means is when you have the top level assembly and then you have a sub assembly under there and then you have sub assemblies under there, that's depth. So what we talked about, when I talked about don't having a lot of things in this top level assembly, that's what I'm talking about. If you have all your parts at that top level, it's called a flat 
flat tree or flat assembly, and that's a no-no. You don't want that. You want depth. So if we follow all of these best practices that we're sharing with us now, what's mm -hmm. the advantage of using large assembly mode? Uh, large assembly mode can still help you. We'll talk about large assembly mode later on. Okay. I mean, all this stuff is great. It's fixed. There's still those modes that will help you. Um, in fact, I mean, I'm going to advocate, at least for the time being, that you always load things lightweight. Like, always. There's no reason, almost no reason not to. So, things like that. So, okay, yeah. So basically all the things I just pointed out, uh, total number of components may have to change this, but sometimes I have people that aren't on new versions. So assembly visualization, <clears throat> another great tool here um, to help you investigate your assembly. So this is actually something that you can get to from here, right here, again, that evaluate tab, but under the performance evaluation, they made it so you can just click on it right there. And then what it does is um, it opens up over here on the left and you can sort by these different headings. Like, so for example, total graphics triangles, and I'm a really visual person. So you can see color coded. There's those fasteners you were just talking about, right? So those are the culprit, right? And you can, you can sort by different things. You can, you know, do open time, rebuild time, right? You can um, go here and, uh, zoom on, oh, well, I guess the whole arm. Zoom in on that part. So this is a really great way to investigate your assemblies. Um, you can add in more columns just by right clicking over here. Come on, oh, over here. There you go. Come on. This one. One of these you added columns. I apologize. No way it's. Anyway, you can add in more columns here. Um, this is something too I like to point out. There's this little help button here for anything right there. So just click on it and it'll take you into the help for that actual tool. This is really great to go in and uh, investigate any of these new features. So it won't, it won't do anything for you per se. It's just an investigative tool. Um, you can also save these as a display state if you'd like. So you don't always have to go in here. So it'll color code these and you can turn on that display state. That's a assembly visualization. Um, and so here, some typical, typical things, current version, if it's converted or not. Uh, rebuild time, which we just showed, talked about. Uh, open time. It's really doggy here. Huh? And then graphics triangles. These are these are some of the major things that people are looking at. Tips and time savers. A little, little bit of a uh, little added bonus here. Um, so if you don't know, if you're inside of an assembly, Hover over a part, press tab to hide, press shift tab to unhide. Tab to hide. Something wasn't for that. Shift tab to unhide. Now, what if something's hidden and you don't know where it is, right? You obviously have to have your cursor back over it to use shift tab. If you do control shift tab, things are ghosted like that, and then just click on them and then they'll appear. Cool, huh? Okay, um, selection helpers. This is something um, pretty, like, again, one of those hidden things. Notice up here next to the um, select tool, there's a pull down. So there's all these different selection modes. You can select all the hidden one, all hidden components, all suppressed components, uh, mated to, select one thing. You can do a volume select. Select the toolbox components if you're using those, which I guess you're not. Um, you can also do by size. So you can select all the really small components, right? And maybe just suppress them for that configuration. So all these different things. Again, this isn't per se large assembly techniques, but it's ways to manipulate your assembly to help you with that. And then lasso, um, stuff like that. 
Um, toggle between visible and hidden components. So that's this button under the assembly. Show show hidden components. You click on it. There's all your hidden components, and then you can show them really quickly. Nice. Okay. Come on. Oh, helps if you're not if you're hitting enter not period. R key. This is one of my personal personal favorites that I use a lot. Just hit R on your keyboard. Everything you've been working on will show up right here. Uh, if it's something that you're working on all the time, pin it down by clicking on this pin right there, and then it'll stay um, at the top of your list here. And then because as you go through and you open stuff, this clears out or refreshes, right? So that's pretty cool. The other thing about the R key is if you see this little, um, ah, Try to point something out and then like it. Uh, this expansion thing, this is uh, those different modes which we'll talk about. You can toggle which mode you wanna do, um, which configuration you wanna open, all this stuff before you even open the part on assembly. That's cute. Yeah. So, R key. Oh, go back here. All right. Yeah, there's all that stuff. Show folder, thumbtack, fan for more options. The functions is followed. Okay, so that's all the tips I want to show you. Now we're going to talk about those assembly modes. Um, and I heard, already heard like you know large assembly mode, right? That's what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to talk about the data structure within SolidWorks. So the first thing is. Uh, parasolid, then we'll talk about tessellation, and then parametrics. So parasolid, that's the geometry, okay? So that's the outside, and that's every, any CAD program. So when you get a, when you get a step file, right, it's that the outside and the inside faces, the surfaces, the edge, and vertices. So that's not, that's nothing that's um, proprietary to SolidWorks. Then you have the tessellation. Again, that's those graphic triangles, right? How it's broken up, how those faces and surfaces are broken up. And we, you do have control over inside SolidWorks, right? And then there's the parametrics, which is completely proprietary to SolidWorks. That's the feature tree, the mates, the equations, all that stuff. So um, now that we kind of know how the files are handled within SolidWorks, we can use the different assembly modes to get what we want when we want it, hopefully. So there's four assembly modes. Um, first one, which is default, is the resolves. Then we have lightweight, large assembly mode, and then large design review. And as you can see here, um, I showed you guys using the R key, right? If you're going to open, um, expand it, you can Fit, um, select one of those modes before you open it, but also if you hit open and you select the assembly, you can toggle these as you go, right? Resolved, everything. That's everything. It's gonna resolve all the geometry, all the graphics, all the parametrics, everything, right? All the stuff in that list. So that's generally the default mode. So lightweight, this is, uh, for now, while you guys are 2018, this is what I recommend all, every time, lightweight code. Because, um, and you can toggle that on in your system options. We'll talk about system options to automatically load components lightweight for assemblies, because it's gonna bring in the geometry and the graphics, but not necessarily the parametrics, so all the features, but you can still add mates, select geometry, measure, mass, explode things, do an interference check, and dimension, and do section views. And you can load and unload on the fly. So you can bring in everything lightweight and then just resolve whatever you're working on. Now, the thing is um, with large assembly mode, which you asked about, it's really just rules. Now we'll do the, um, the lightweight mode, but really what it's doing is for certain part number limits, and I think this is the default 500, it'll hide certain things or change your um, display edges to shading mode. So that goes back to um, that, 
the graphics, right? Uh, so the less things you're showing, the more, the better your performance on. But of course, sometimes you need that, right? Um, this is kind of, this is an interesting one. If you've ever switched to work on a part and then you switch back to the assembly and that little pop-up pops up in the corner, it's like, do you want me to rebuild this? That's what this is doing, it's saying, don't do that. 500 is the, the limit. Um, so you can go to tools, large assembly mode. You can have it open when you need to, but you can also um, toggle it over while you're in an assembly. So it's right, right there. Okay, so um, when you're in it, it's it, the button's pressed and you can always toggle out on it. Now I talked about lightweight mode and sorry, not everyone will know that. So you can toggle lightweight mode if you have something already open is you just go here and set resolve to lightweight. This doesn't take forever. Um, and so it didn't turn everything lightweight and that because that's because there could be some in context references, so it won't do it. But for example, here, this screw that's lightweight, all I can see are the planes and the main references. I can't see any of the geometry in that screw. So again, this is something you want to use. Um, if you're not already using it, use this. And then you can right click and just set it to resolve if you need to work on it. And then all that stuff comes back. Okay. So that's definitely lightweight mode. Okay. Uh, all right, that was large assembly mode. Now, the last one, which um, depending on what you're doing is not very common, but some people use it a lot. Uh, it's super fast, but it's graphics only. And when you go to open something in large design review, it's going to pop up this warning, basically saying this is what these are, these are the only things you can do in large design, design re review. And I'm going to ask. I'm going to asterisk that real quick, but uh, this is what, what can you do? You can take snapshots, you can do a walkthrough, you can add comments, you can measure. Now there's an asterisk there because the measuring isn't quote unquote active, accurate. So it might be just for like quick ones, but you can do section views again because it's graphics only. It might not be that accurate, but you can hide show. Um, the big powerful thing you can do with it is you can do open, selective open or edit. So this is really what the name says, large design review. So when you're doing a review for your peers and you just want to look at the assembly, this is perfect. This is what it was made for. Now, I asterisked it earlier because in SOLIDWORKS 2019, they made a huge step up on this and you can do a lot more with large design review. We have a great video. Um, I'm going to send it to Lars after this so he can distribute it for everybody that was done with one of my colleagues. But the big things you can do is you can add and take away components and you can mate in large design review, which is huge. It almost negates doing the whole lightweight thing, which I praise to the heavens right before this right it's really a big game changer so um just want to throw that out there you guys are on 2018 right now you cannot use it yet until you upgrade to 2019 but then you will be able to just uh to really hammer it home here fully resolve resolved this is a 6,000 component uh assembly Fully resolved took seven minutes. Lightweight mode took four and a half minutes. Large design review took four seconds. So, yeah. Yeah, I always use this for mine, but you can't mate. And now that you can, it's a reason to go to 19 for sure. Definitely, definitely. What about drawings? Um, so drawings, of course, if you're if you have a large assembly and it's not behaving well when you're doing drawings um, there are some tricks you can create fewer drawing views per sheet um, break up drawings with many sheets into multiple drawing files if possible consider using e-drawings um, you can also do things like quick view 
um, of a drawing it, that makes it printable. Really, you can just basically do a PDF. Um, let's see if I have a drawing that I can show you. No, no drawings in here. Ah, oh, wrong lesson. Bear with me one second. Okay. There's, so here's a drawing. Um, so instead of using the resolve view, you could do something like quick view. Okay. And it pulls your drawing up very quickly, but you can't do anything with it. You can, it's just for viewing, but you can print it out. You can look at it and you can print it out the last save thing. So again, this could be something useful for your design reviews, something like that. So that's a, a trick there. And e-drawings is a is a great tool as well. Just do that quick convert e-drawings or even use e-drawings just to open something and it you can do a lot of things that you don't need um, to actually modify things. All right, modeling techniques. And these are just recommendations. Uh, first one is something called speed pack. Now um, I've been informed that you guys avoid this. And of course I was gonna throw that in that it's not ideal for everybody. What it does is it creates a new configuration that's graphics only, um, but it can have mate references and it can be used in drawings. So this top level assembly of this bolter that I have. So you see that circle there, right? All of these, um, oh, this is a great one. Shift C collapses your tree. Yeah, Shift C. So see all these ones with the icon here? Um, that's a speed pack, right? It's a different configuration. So when I hover over them, I can see it and I can rotate around, but I can't do anything with them. The only thing I can do something with is this assembly, which is the only one that's not a, a speed pack. Um, so this is a, it's a configuration that you can change um, to on or off. And uh, it's, uh, as I mentioned, you can just do a graphics only speed pack, which is the whole thing and it turns it on to graphics. Uh, or you can do a mated speed pack where it looks at the faces that are mated and keeps those as real so you can still mate to them, but uh, everything else becomes basically graphics. Now, um, as I mentioned, uh, Lars and I were talking a little bit before this, there are, can be issues with these being updated, especially with PDN. So um, Definitely pay attention to your best design practices for Google and don't go crazy like trying to think speed pack is the magic sauce that's going to solve everything because it's probably not. I, I tell people if they're not familiar with this, they want to try it, try it on one or two assemblies, see how it goes, run it through the paces, and then you can go through and convert things. But um, that, one of the suggestions that's all our offers. Components, try to use symmetry when possible, right? We talked about that feature tree. The less features you have in there, the better for everybody. Right. Plus, why do something twice, right? <laughs> do a half, mirror it over. Reduces the number of assembly mates, reduces complexity, faster rebuild time. So leverage symmetry as, as much as possible. Patterns. As I mentioned before, avoid patterning on top of other patterns. So I've seen that. And again, I'll, I always say things I've been guilty of patterning a pattern, right? Don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, do the pattern a core feature. Move big patterns as far down as the tree as possible. That'll avoid um, creating references to those patterns, but also allow you to suppress them if you need to, right? Like, again, these holes. Is this something I need to see in the top level assembly? Probably not. So I can have a configuration where those are surprised, something like that. Fillets and chamfers, create at the end. Okay, so uh, I was definitely guilty of this. I wanted to see how nice that rounded over edge would look as I'm going through designing it, but keep it to the end. 
um, and that group them into folders uh, because that you can suppress those, right? Have a simplified. If anyone's doing any kind of simulation, you know, sometimes fillets and chamfers can cause you issues with doing some kind of simulation, right? So that's another thing. Um, to have, and then combine same size fillets and chamfers. It's so easy to just be like, well, I want to fill up this. So here's a feature here. I want to fill up that. Here's a feature there. If they're the same size and they're using the same radius, create them all within the same feature. And there's a tool um, called Fillet Expert to kind of help you do that. If you're not familiar with it, I'll show you. Does grouping fillets and uh, chamfers into folders actually increase all work performance? I mean, I definitely um, appreciate doing it for other reasons, but not necessarily because there's still features in the tree, but it allows you to suppress them very easily yes. and organize it. So, yeah, so you're the, not really. It just helps you like I said, organize it. Um, if you're in features and you go to the fillet tool, generally it's on this manual, right? This is what everyone's used to seeing, but there's something here called fillet expert. Um, which will allow you to uh, find similar size fillets, change them all into one feature, things like that. So um, we have another tool in here, uh, and that's under the fillet command. And it'll only show up when you're um, creating a new fillet, I believe, fillet expert. If you, yeah, if you go in, but this fillet expert will allow you to edit fillets that have already been created. But if you go into a fillet, I don't think I have one in here um, but if you go into a fillet that's already been created and you right click and say edit fillet expert won't show up um, configurations you know if you're not familiar with these definitely um, this is what i've been talking about with different configurations so you can have uh, a default, right, which has got everything in it. Then you can have a medium detail, detail and a simplified detail uh, with different things suppressed. Um, and that way, again, if you're not familiar with configurations, it's this tab right here. So there's always one default configuration. Um, unfortunately, uh, what is this? It's a multi-feature part. Let's see if I suppress, sorry. Do just a new one. Test, just right click and say add configuration. And I'll go back here. Please don't blow up on me. <laughs> um, like the demo no no, right? Um, so I suppress that. So now um, in this test configuration, if I it's gone, if I go to default or whatever that was, it's back. I, I my Italian's a little rusty, so I don't know what a uh, what team that is, but <coughs> so that's it's a bearing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, thank you, Lars. Uh -huh. I don't know what time, but I, I could that's use a bearing. I could use Google Translate, right? Um, so, so that's you leverage those configurations again using um, like we just talked about fillets and put the fillets and you know, chamfers and suppress those in in a configuration, right? And then uh, you want to have the multiple parts and a lot of benefits there. Simplified configurations should only include uh, the information needed in the assembly, mating surfaces, interference surfaces, remove information that's not needed, cosmetic features, detail features, internal components, right? You need to see all the PCB stuff in there if you don't need it, right? Especially if it's a supplier part, who, who cares? to put a fine point on it right per, uh, and that goes to this purchase parts and assemblies since you're not manufacturing this who cares don't don't include what you don't need if it's an assembly save it as a part and that's easy just do a save as save it as a part it saves it as a multi-body part and i always like to tell this story i was working with a customer who they were designing custom beds for trucks right so they were just doing that part and they get the whole um, truck assembly from Ford or Chevy, and they were wondering why their assemblies were so slow. <laughs> and so I went there and I said, well, let's think about what you really need, right? You need the dimensions of what you're bolting to and you need the holes, right? So like either make it a speed pack or 
do a simplified configuration, whatever. And they just didn't know, you know, that's why I come here and do talks like this for you guys. So I think that's, that's really the majority of the presentation, the main parts. Um, this stuff kind of gets into the weeds a little bit. So I'm not gonna go through all of this because this is really something that's better done reference wise, but um, there are things you can do, system options and document properties to um, imp increase your performance. Uh, so general rule, right, performance goes up when image quality goes down. Um, the guide for here is green enable something, red disable this. Um, also, what I like to mention is if you're not aware of it, you can save um, different settings versions. So if you go here, this is called the task pane and this is the resource one, the one that looks like a house. Go to copy settings wizard and then you can save your settings for the large assembly, right? And then you can restore those. So actually on my desktop, yes. I have a large assemblies and then a, reg a regular one, right? So you can, when you're working on a part, you know you're doing it, just use that. So everything's turned on, everything's beautiful, and then a large assembly one. So once you go through and you make these changes to your system options, that's that. I'll save that out. But then I'm not gonna go through all of these. Um, show thumbnail and graphics, fine. Show latest news feed and task pane. Why would you ever turn <laughs> that off? Enable freeze bar, um, that'll let you freeze features. Let's see, how um, many populate view, that's when you're doing drawings, user specific color, okay. Uh, some new transparency. Verification on rebuild. This is one I like to point out. It is a performance hit, but it's something I generally say to have, keep this on. Lars had a great example that he used to show that showed exactly why. Uh, because when you add in a feature, if you don't have this on, SolidWorks isn't going to go back and check to make sure that what that feature you did didn't mess up your model. So I kind of disagree with this, or I do disagree with this, but I'd like to show you just because it is a it is a performance hit because it's going to go back and look. But don't go turning that off unless you absolutely have to. Um, automatically load components lightweight, huge one. Just keep this in mind. If you want to turn this on, if you've already discovered you're on the call and you can't do it, your assembly has to be closed in order to set this option on. Okay, um, always resolve subassemblies. Yeah, keep that off. Uh, no preview during open. That's something, right? You go to open, open a file and you can see it on the screen. Do you really need that? You know what you're doing. You guys are geniuses here. So. Uh, use large assembly mode, right? As I said, you can set this to play around with this. So it automatically turns on, but just also get in the habit of when you open something, you open it lightweight. Uh, external references, don't prompt to save read only documents, load documents and memory only. Scroll selected item in view. I don't, that's one of those things um, when you're inside of an assembly, inside the mm -hmm. graphics area. If you click on something, it'll scroll to that part. And one of those things, I don't think it's a huge hit, but something I think you can consider turning off. Yeah, that one that one's really convenient to have turned on when you've got a- It is, it, there's a reason they added it. Yeah. Uh, Especially when you've got a pretty deep assembly tree and you're trying to figure exactly, out exactly, exactly. Yeah, which which sub 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 assembly is this washer in? <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, set all transitions off. Turn off auto recovery. Yeah, you guys are doing PDM uh, file explorer. Yeah, and probably just show my computer if you're even using that. Well, have have you ever used the D key? Oh. Think so. so if you have a washer, and you don't know where it came from. If you've got that assembly, if you, if you pick on the washer and hit your D key, it'll show part subassembly, subassembly, oh, subassembly. You can you scroll through and see that the breadcrumbs. That's yeah. well, it actually. I'm glad you brought that up, Lars. It actually shows up up here. But what Lars is talking about, this is called breadcrumbs. So mm -hmm. so you can go through and go up and yeah. down. Turned on by default. 
Uh, yeah, yes. could be. Okay. You just never notice it. So it what Lars is if you move your mouse. Yeah. yeah. What Lars is saying is if you hit D key, it brings it to your cursor, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, but the D key, and Lars, you got me off on a tangent. Um, another great thing for a D key is it brings your confirmation corner down to your your mouse as well. So you can exit out. So on those on those breadcrumbs, if he selects one of the subassemblies, it'll highlight the subassembly in blue on the screen yeah. so you can see, oh, that's the one I want. Yeah, and you can cool. even open it from that. Okay, yeah, that's cool. You can do a lot of great stuff. You have to click on the part in question before you press D key. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so no, if you just click on it, it'll show up in the upper left. Yeah, but if yeah. you want it like right where your cursor is, the D key so brings it up. Yeah, see so it's right here after I clicked on that face. Yeah. But when I go D. Then I can, yeah, exactly like Lars said, and I can look at the mates for that particular part. I can look at that subassembly, so that subassembly. If you click on that subassembly, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it highlights, and then you can open, yeah, it, open it right it. from there. That's nice. Hey, come on, Lars. This is my presentation. Well, you were wrapping it up. I'm like, hey, you haven't shown him everything. <laughs> who's, who's doing this here? Oh, man. It just reminded me, he's like, how do you find the washer? That's how I find the washer, is using yeah. that. It's just a couple of years old, so. No, that's not surprised you don't know about it yet. That's yeah, perfect. That's I appreciate newer it. than 2016 or so. It's probably not. Yeah, yeah I, I think in 2016 was when they first introduced it, and mm -hmm. they've done very. It's gotten better things. over the years. It's gotten better, right? Yeah. yeah, like we, our project, we skipped SolidWorks 2017, fairly recently upgraded to 2018. Right. Yeah, so you haven't seen some of this stuff. It's might be good. Um, to come back and maybe do like uh, what's new for you guys, mm -hmm. then, um, just so you can see stuff like that. But that's it, actually. So I gave Lars stuff, but not. Um, so the main, uh, so that was that was the main thing. We'll send this presentation to you. Um, I also like to talk about our tech support here. I know you guys have internal tech support people you can ask, right? But also. We're available um, to Google Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call, chat, email. Um, they're there to help you. They're really smart people. If you, whoever you rely on is not around, or maybe they can't help you, right? You just call in our support, start a ticket. They'll they'll do. It is mainly for you know. Oh, this something's not working right. There's a bug or something. But it's also for hey, I don't. What's this D key do? No help you, right? of course. So um, Google or pays us for that, and and that's what we love to do. Um, but also, um, I'll, Lars will send out my email information if you have a question about like how do I do this or what trading class should I take for this. That's my job. So I'm cool. not not the tech support guy, but I will help you or get you to the right person. Mm -hmm. And we're also recording this. We'll be posting it on our uh, site and sending out 